Hi. This time we're going to be looking at an equation with a variable on the bottom, namely 7 over x equals 4. When the variable is on the bottom, this tends to be the most intimidating questions for students. And I'm going to show you two different ways of approaching it. So, we've got 7 over x, kind of an ugly looking x I've written there, but 7 over x equals 4. Well, one way is again, we want to get x on its own. But if it's on the bottom, we can't get it on the own. If I divided both sides by 7, I'd still have a 1 up there. So it's not going to be on its own, meaning I've got to get x over. If I multiply both sides by x, it'll at least remove it from the bottom. Still won't be on its own, but I'm getting some progress. So I'm going to multiply both sides by x. And remember, the dot representing multiplication, good idea in this case so I don't get too confused. Also, multiplying by x over here. So these will cancel. What I got? 7 equals 4x. And now this looks more familiar. This looks like a, qu a problem we've solved before. Because what do I do? Get x on its own. Well, it's multiplying by 4, divide by 4. Divide by 4. These will cancel. And I got 7 over 4 equals x. But there's another way you can go about it. That of inverting both sides. Which is a really fancy way of saying flipping both sides. Right now, I can think I've got 4. Well, you can really think that's the same as writing 4 over 1. Dividing by 1 doesn't do anything. So I've got 4 over 1 on this side, 7 over x. I can actually flip both sides and get x over 7 equals 1 over 4. Remember, I did it to both sides, so I'm OK. Now, I need x on its own. Well, right now, we're dividing by 7, so I can multiply by 7. Multiply by 7, cancels, and we get x equals 7 over 4. And as always, our answers match like they must. So two different ways of solving it, both work.